This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rare News. I'm your host, Ryan Ryan, and as always, it's bloody good to have you guys here in the audience today. This week, Jagex is not giving us an update, as next week they're releasing Valamore Part 2, The Rising Darkness. So we will be going through the blog today and just discussing what's happening, looking at some extra details that we didn't see during the Summer Summit, and more importantly, deciding which content we're going to be trying first because we will be live streaming the release of Valamore Part 2 next week, this exact moment when they update the game. There's new quests, there's the big dragon hoi ho ho boss at the top of the mountain, and the Herbal mini minigame, and just some good sceneries we've got to check out. So, my question for you guys to answer in the comment section down below today before we dive into the blog is which piece of content will you be doing first when Valmore Part 2 comes out? Let me know, drop a like and subscribe while you're down there, I'd greatly appreciate the support. And now finally, just before we jump into this blog, allow me to talk about today's sponsor for Rune News, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. Take command of over 2500 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships of 10 major nations ranging from biplanes and armoured cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. War Thunder features a comprehensive customization system with countless camouflages, historical markings and decorations for all types of vehicles including ones created by the community. Take control of any tank or aircraft that you like with nothing but your mouse and keyboard or a controller or if you really want to experience the game at its full potential you can use simulator mode. Play War Thunder for free on the PC, PlayStation or Xbox now by using my link in the pinned comment or the video description down below. New and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that include multiple premium vehicles the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lines, and 7 days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so be quick. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder, where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right in the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. With an unmatched wealth of high quality content to discover, there's simply no better game suited for fans of military history. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Valamor The Rising Darkness is the name of next week's expansion, Valamor Part 2, and this is everything you guys need to know about this expansion and what to expect next week. First off, the map. Anything grayed out is a concept by Gentle Tractor and may never make it to the game. Jagex does state that. However, Anything that is not grayed out is going to be coming next week. The mountain range is finished. You've got a little island down the bottom here. It's going to look good not having black squares and rectangles through the fucking map. Valamore and Zaya will finally be complete, at least for now. But moving forward, the new quest. There is a new quest called the Heart of Darkness. Seems like a pretty easy quest. You just need 55 mining, 48 thieving and slayer, 46 agility. We've recommended stats of a combat level at 65. So it doesn't sound like it's going to be super difficult. Pretty basic entry level quest. And there'll be another murder mystery quest being added as well, which they did announce in the Summer Summit. Similar to the one you do in Lumbridge Swamp with the guy throwing knives out of the fucking cupboards or whatever. You've got to use a mirror to deflect it back to him. Or the one in uh, the Sinclair, is it Sinclair Mansion, north of Sears Village. So pretty basic, you know, early level stuff. The murder mystery quest is called Death on the Isle, which only requires you to have finished Children of the Sun, which is the quest to get you to Valamore. And you'll need 40 thieving, 45 agility, 30 crafting, and a combat level of at least 50 is recommended. So it's likely this time we'll be doing the murdering as the player, um, or at least murdering of the murderer. And we've got another possible quest here, I think, to go alongside the meme of the ribboning tail of the lily pad labor dispute. Um, oh, they're not going to spill the beans, so there may be some other quests that we don't know about, but we know absolutely two are coming to the game. I'd imagine they might give us one for the Herblon minigame, like Guardians of the Rift, but they might not, who knows. But we know two quests are coming, with potential surprise quests also in the mix, which Jagex has done in the past. Now we've got the new group PVM boss on top of the mountain, the Hoi... 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 Kod, hoi... Hoi... Kodal. The Hoi... The Hoi... Kodal. This guy is, um... It's going to be pretty juicy. It's going to be some very entertaining content, and we will be diving into it next week. Absolutely. Now, someone was saying to me in like my stream chat that you'll be able to solo it, and it won't have an enraged phase because of that. I actually don't believe that for a fucking second, but I haven't actually read the blog, and I don't intend to look too much into this boss because I do kind of want to wing it on the stream on the day with you guys and just kind of 
have fun because that, I just find that really fun to just kind of go in blind and send it. So um, the gameplay is right there that we can go through, but there is a recap, which I think is just going to give us the TLDR, which you will just have to join the Dwarven party with up to 20 people per party, by the way. So if you've got more than 20 people, you're going to have to split off into other worlds. Attack the parts of the dragon sticking out of the rock while avoiding hazards. Don't forget your protection prayers. So you will need to protect from mage range and melee. When the dragon moves, climb to the top of the mountain and attack the head, much like Ulm. If the hoi, ho, hoi, hoi coat, hoi coat uh, uses its tail to defend itself, shatter it so you can resume the fight and deal damage to the head until it is dead. Uh, once you've pacified it, there'll be a, a bit of downtime and it gets ready to fight again. During this downtime, you'll be able to slide down to the encampment and resupply and bank if you need. There you go. So, seems pretty straightforward. Basically, just hit the cunt until his head shows up hit his head, and then if the tail's in the way, hit the tail, and then get back to hitting his head. There's your guide right there, 30 fucking seconds, problem solved. So looking forward to trying that next week. As for the rewards, however, we do have the Tome of Earth, which I forgot was coming to the game with. I just received some, uh, not, not bad news. I just received some really annoying news from someone, which I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, fuck. Anyways, um, so the rewards I forgot were coming to the game. Uh, well, not that I forgot. Sorry, I forgot the Tome of Earth was coming to the game. Soil Pages is a great name for the for the Tome. Great stuff. It's just like the Tome of Water and Tome of Fire, but for Earth. However, the Dragon Hunter Wand is um, also coming to the game. It's going to have a 10% magic burn, uh, damage bonus and then another 20%. I'm hoping adds on top of that, not like multiplies, but additively, if that makes sense. So it's an extra 30%, not 10%, then 20%. Um, and you've got 50% increased accuracy, which puts it above the Trident. Not as good as the Hunter and the Lance, as they basically stated here. It's just good for Metal Dragon, Slayer Tars, and maybe the, the, the Halloumi Dragon itself. Essentially what Jagex is saying in this little section here is that it's, uh, it's kind of shit. It's the shittest of the Dragon Bane weapons at least. But we'll know more when we find out. The Hide Armor is going to be pretty sick if you're using like a Vendor Bow and Slayer Tars. Although you might still want Mazori over it if you don't care too much about prayer bonus. Still pretty good. Regardless, I do like that. And then the prayer regeneration potion. It's going to be pretty dope. Basically like a prayer enhance from um, Chambers of Zarek. It will um, effectively regenerate one prayer point every 12 game ticks for 8 minutes, which is huge. That's 8 prayer points a minute, which is sounds slow on paper, but it's way more prayer per dose and potion over a prayer potion, which is good in places like the Colosseum and the Inferno where you might be taking your time while learning and kind of uh, trying to figure out wave solves and just wanting to practice and take your time. This is a great way to keep your prayer up. You're only gonna need like one potion for the majority of the event, maybe two. So that's really nice and really handy. I think you're also gonna need to go to the new uh, Herbal or minigame anyway to get the other parts of this potion. So this will be mixing in with that of course, which we will now be talking about the uh, Herbal or activity behind me. Sorry, the, the, the message I got is just, it's. It's, it's to do with this, um, for those that aren't aware, this isn't RuneScape related, I'm sorry. I'm buying a new car and I'm, it, it's just pissing me off the way that it's being handled at the moment. But more will be coming on that information if you're interested in that. Either later in the video or we'll talk about it in the live stream, but it's just... <laughs> oh my fucking god. Anyways, the new herbal activity is called Master Mixology. And one problem I have with this is the same problem I have with Guardians of the Rift. And that's when it was in a blog and in front of me and reading it, I couldn't just, I, I didn't get it. Um, it's way easier for me to understand actually playing it, so I'm, I'm not going to go through and try to explain exactly what's happening because I just don't fucking understand it. But what I will say is that the general gist of it is uh, you're being told to make certain potions, you go make the potions, you give them to the guy, and you get points. That's what I'm pretty sure it's all about. You don't need to be using your own personal secondaries, but you can and slash will be using your own herbs, and each herbs are required for different up here different symbols for different types of herbs in your bank. Um, so get ready for that shit. The rewards look pretty good. You've got the potion packs, which to my understanding are more than likely, almost always, a complete waste of your fucking time and a ripoff, like every single minigame that provides some sort of pack. The goading potion is for um, aggroing creatures around you. So if you wanna steal other people's rock crabs, you just go activate the goading potion and you steal that shit. I don't know if it'll actually work on the crabs, but if you wanna do things like dust devils, and you want them to aggro on you rather than you keep hitting them, act, uh, drink the goading potion and they will just keep on coming and you can just keep on blasting. And then you've got the Aldarian potion, which is a reagent to the crate. The, okay, so it's, it's part of the, is that what reagent? Re Regan? I don't know what that means, but it's part of the goading potion 
um, it's part of making it, but it's also used as a secondary ingredient for the prayer regeneration potion. So you're gonna to wanna to stack up on those boys. You've got the Re Re Regan's, Regan's pouch. Is it Regan's? It must be Regan's. This lets you hold up to 26 of all secondary ingredients from Limpot Roots to Unicorn Horns. Mostly it's just gonna be used in the Tower of Life and uh, collecting Mortmire fungus, I'd imagine. I don't think you'll really use it anywhere else. Pretty handy stuff though. Alchemist outfit is 10% uh, chance to save a secondary ingredient when mixing potions. Pretty fucking big. I like that. The Alchemist Amulet is the Amulet of Chemistry, uh, but it's increased chance to 15%. And is it unlimited as well? Small amount of charges, or you add the charges by using the chemistries on it. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save my uh, Chemistry Amulet then because I just made a shit ton of them. So that's awesome. 15% chance is big, man. And the pre-pot device, tradable, questionable item, not sure if it's necessary, but I will be getting one and I will be fucking using it because it is a big boy. So pre-pot device pretty much speaks for itself. Put the potions in, drink from it, and you save yourself six game ticks at the bank just for you to continue bank standing anyway, waiting on your dickhead friend who's probably gone to take a piss and hasn't told you. So now no one's going to tob. Let me move my mouse off the screen. Sorry about that. Potion storage, which is... Um, <laughs> Look, this is a hot take and it's the right take. Potion storage is because you're retarded, but I guess I'm gonna get it anyway because it does look neat and very well organized. But if you need potion storage because you're out of bank space, I can fix that problem for you by applying common sense. But potion storage coming to the game is going to be awesome. Colossal Worm agility course, new agility course, new shit, new outfit, new graceful recolor. Sounds good, but it's agility, so it's gay. Squaring, squ squaring, blah, 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 squirrel transmog. This is, what's the squirrel? That's the agility pet. That looks fucking sick. Check that bad boy out. Excuse me. All right, I'm getting that. And oh, that's it for Valamore part two. So um, looks good. Looking forward to next week's video and then next week's live stream for Valamore part two. But what about the money that you can make because of Valamore part two? This is a big update and there's lots of big things and there is a big amount of money that you guys can make right now. And you're gonna find that information out in about 30 seconds time by Wade Green in the Grand Exchange update here for Rune News. My name is Ryan Ryan. you're watching Rune News, and you're watching Rune News. It's fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment for Rune News. My name is Wade Green, and this week we've got the Dragon Hunter Lance on the fucking rise, and that's because of the Huey helicopter coming in hot, the new Dragon Group boss is gonna be fucking big. And JX did state that the new Dragon Hunter wand is not gonna be as good as the Lance or the Crossbow. Unless there is a big magic weakness on this new boss, this is the weapon to have. But I would not invest because this price is likely to skyrocket even further just a little bit for next week. I would wait until after the update and the hype dies down before buying yourself a Dragon Hunter, Lance, or Crossbow. Now, with the biggest loss of the week is whatever the fuck this is called. This is the melee strength version of the Odium Ward and the Malediction Ward from the Wilderness. Obviously, the prices have plummeted and planked because Wrathball isn't coming to the game, wasn't ever going to make it into the game. Sit the fuck down, Mod Mank, for stealing that name from the people, trying to sell it off in bot accounts for very well trade money. Maybe next time, when they repitch, uh, the boss at least, or the idea to combine these shields, it'll come back. It might be worth investing in the meantime and holding long term because that is likely an idea we will see come back in the near future for tri-breeding accounts. So, Tots, Ket, Zil, shields, not a bad investment. And now the Tubigan Shadow is slowly back on the rise at 1.2 bill, slowly building back up its price. People were panicking because it hit 1.1 bill and thought the bots were going to ruin the game. This has got nothing to do with bots, it never has done. Bots have zero impact on the price of the Tumigan Shadow. It's quite simply put, the new mage weapon is shit. Tumigan Shadow is back on the rise. It's the way that it is. Get the fuck over it. And finally, Mole Slippers are at an all-time low for 2024, which is a perfect time to reinvest, ready for the huge price spike in 2025. We're going to see big Mole Slipper love and hitting 30 mil at this exact moment, this time next year in 2025. Mark my words or unsubscribe So make sure you grab yourself some mole slippers today and become a rich cunt tomorrow. My name is Wade Green. You've been watching Ryan Ryan on Rune News. This is Rune News and Wade Green on Rune News.
Our first Iron Man moment for the week goes to Undead Hacksaw getting the Granite Mole here at 536,000 coins. GZ on getting such a beautiful drop from your Gargoyle Slayer task. Our second Iron Man moment is quite a ridiculous drop from both of these nuts. Not an Iron Man, by the way. Main account getting a Crystal Armor and Enhanced Weapon Seed. Two seeds right there in the chat box. You can see it. Enhanced and Armor Weapon Seed. First KC from the Corrupted Gauntlet. Very hateful drop from a lot of people. Iron Men are seething looking at this screenshot, but that is insane luck. Congratulations on the juicy loot. And finally, Not An Ego has finished the Whisperer collection log right there. 4,244 kills. Just got the pet at the very end there. Beautiful log. 14, uh, what are they called? Axe handles and nine rings from this boss. Insane grind, especially at 243 collection log slots. You are out of your mind. Already green logged, sorry, Vardorva, so you can see here too. That is some insane luck. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it this week for Rune News. My name is Rune News. You've been watching Ryan Ryan. Thank you very much again for watching Rune News. And thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's episode of Rune News. Have a good night. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, god damn. Fuck me, look at that boy. It's huge.